Well, good morning. I really want to thank Craig and Marilyn Urquiz for all the hard work they've put into this event and for including me in it. And I want to thank my friend Brad Fisher from RBC Wealth Management for uh, first alerting me to this opportunity. I, I, I walked in here today and saw this enormous room and, and uh, over 400 people, and I said to Craig, how many years have you been doing this? One. You're off to a good start, but you may need a bigger convention center in a couple of years. This is extremely, extremely impressive. I, uh, I, I am so impressed by what you've accomplished here uh, with this first event of this type. And uh, it brings back a lot of memories for me from work that I've been privileged to do over the years. Uh, my wife and I, Marilyn and I, have both been very, very involved in our, our schools in Bellevue. And um, I served nine years in the Bellevue Schools Foundation, where we put a lot of emphasis on raising money to improve reading uh, for all of the kids in our school district. You know, you, you think, well, it's Bellevue, so everyone's delivered to school by BMW limousine. But in fact, uh, we have uh, a half a dozen elementary schools where a majority of the kids are free from lunch eligible. Uh, it's a much more diverse community than when I moved there as a, as a teenager. Uh, and so we invested heavily in, in, uh, in reading programs to help our teachers and uh, aides help the kids because uh, we understood very well the old, the old axiom that uh, from kindergarten to third grade, you're learning to read. But from fourth grade on, you're reading to learn. And if a child in his fourth grade who is behind in the reading, it becomes more and more difficult for them to catch up. That's why programs uh, like Children's Reading Foundation and similar programs are so extremely important. I, I'd like to talk a little bit about that today. I, uh, I have to mention, though, that after this event, I had the privilege of going to Hawthorne Elementary School uh, to uh, read to a couple of different classes. I've been assigned uh, the task of reading a wool bird. Uh, it's about a sheep, you get the pun. <laughs> and I read the elephants. I, I hope there's no hidden message in that. <laughs> it, it's a lot of fun to, to visit schools. I've been to over 80 schools in our state, including schools here in the Tri Cities. And uh, I, I have to say, my favorite is to uh, my favorite is visiting elementary schools. The kids are so young and, and and energetic and curious, and also, frankly, always a little skeptical of the guy in the suit. Uh, and yet, ultimately, extremely welcoming and eager to learn. And uh, those little hands go up. You ask them a question, and arms shoot up. Uh, and it is absolutely uh, a highlight uh, of uh, my, my month and year when I get to visit the school like Hawthorne. I also enjoy meeting the teachers at these schools that I visit. Uh, the miracle workers, the, the, the dedicated uh, public <coughs> servants, the, the, these adults who are so committed to the children. It reminds me of that saying that uh, a teacher affects eternity because she can never tell where her influence stops. I think it's absolutely right that the ripples in the pond from that, that pebble, that stone the teacher puts in, uh, go on forever and can ripple through that child's life and that child's family's life on and on. Uh, and, and that influence of the teacher begins from that very first day that you walk into kindergarten. I'll bet every one of you can recall your earliest days in kindergarten, that, that vivid experience of walking in that classroom for the first time. You're a little nervous, maybe scared but you're excited, and that teacher becomes such an important figure to you. My mother was a, a kindergarten teacher and a first and second grade teacher in Bath, Maine, uh, right after World War II. Uh, my dad uh, got out of the service, and he and my mom were married, and uh, they're, they're from Iowa, but dad loved the forest, loved the woods. He was a big James Fenmore Cooper uh, fan, uh, read all of the all the books growing up, and they moved out to Maine, which was actually a terrible idea because the economy collapsed there right after the war, and the shipbuilding industry was growing up. But she got a job as a teacher, and uh, she began to realize how important she was to those kids when one of her students insisted on his parents driving by my parents' apartment every night so they, she, the kid could see my mom standing in the, at this kitchen sink and see if he went to wash the dishes. He just wanted to see that Mrs. McKenna was home. Everything was okay, then he could go home and go to bed. And she still, at the age of almost 87, receives Christmas cards from some of her teachers from Bath, Maine, in the late 1940s because of the impact that she had on their lives. Well, parents also play an incredibly important role uh, in a child's preparation for school. You know
know, that, that's what the Children's Reading Foundation is all about, is to encourage parents to spend at least 20 days, 20 minutes a day reading to their kids and making sure those kids have access to books. And uh, I just think that there's nothing more important when you think about preparing a child for school than making sure that child is ready to learn uh, and, and is already starting to read. You know, I grew up in a home like many of you did where I was surrounded by books. We were fortunately growing up in the pre-internet age, uh, and we got most of your information from the printed text. Uh, and my dad loved books. Uh, it, it, you know, he was a child of depression, didn't have a lot of books around the house, but he bought books starting in my, early in my parents' marriage. My mom used to tease him. She'd say, I can always hear her voice, too. Bob, what are the, why did you buy more books? We have so many you haven't even read yet, and they would stack up. But Dad used to haunt the, the library sales, when the libraries would sell the books off. We still have books uh, that have a library mark on that he would buy at the book sale. Um, and you know, those, now that my dad has passed away, those books have become very important reminders of him for my sisters. And we treasure the books that he collected. We grew up around books, and my sisters and I uh, you know, grew up reading from a very early age because of my parents. In fact, my sisters who are uh, older than I am used to buy books for me as well, so I grew up that way and uh, fell in love with, uh, with, with the printed word and fell in love with reading and what you can learn uh, from reading. But we know that not every child has that opportunity. Uh, we know that uh, not every child is growing up around books, growing up with parents who read them. Sometimes they're growing up with parents who don't read themselves. And that's why the Children's Reading Foundation is so important. It's really a model of community partnership with such an impressive list of supporters, libraries, healthcare providers, uh, uh, service providers like RBC and, and Sun Pacific, sports organizations, large and small businesses, you name it, partnering together to make every, sure every child has an opportunity to read. Uh, all of you who are partners in this program are committed to working together to help give all children a strong foundation for learning so that when they go to school, they're well prepared. By the time they enter the fourth grade, they're proficient and they're ready to learn using the reading skills they've learned uh, up to that point. Uh, this vision that every child learns to read early and well, thereby reaching her or his full potential later in life, should be the vision of every parent and caring adult in that child's life as well. We can't just leave it to the schools. You know, education doesn't mean dropping our child off at the school door or at the bus stop. It means partnering with the teachers and with the school and being accountable as parents. And if we have children around us who don't have that kind of support, it means finding ways to provide support to those kids. Hence, again, the importance of the Children's Reading Foundation. Illiteracy in this country, as I know you are all aware, is, is, is a, a big problem. And unfortunately, it's not a problem which is getting smaller, it's getting bigger. More than 30 million Americans simply cannot read. And more than 42 million read below the level needed to function successfully in a modern economy.